I have somehow learned that there is a particular loan relating to food that you took. Yes. And I raise these things because many people in South Africa are poor and they could be inspired not to lose hope no matter their circumstances if they were to hear your story considering the position that you have been nominated for. Tell us about that loan. Thank you, Chief Justice. When I finished metric, I was quite confident that I would get what used to be called then exemption and therefore would qualify to go into university. I, I didn't think I would have a problem with getting that and I was confident that I was going to get a bursary too. But my problem was that uh, at home the situation was quite bad. My mother had stopped working uh, two years before my matric. She had uh, lost her job. And, uh, and uh, by the time I uh, finished what would now be called grade 11, she said she had exhausted all her savings. And uh, so somehow I felt that uh, the society, the community would be thinking that after metric I would now be able to go and work and help my mother, who, whom the whole community could see was struggling. But I wanted to go and do law, and I was determined, but I felt that I couldn't go unless I made arrangements to make sure that my mother and my, my brothers and sisters behind would be able to have something to eat. And my mother was not working, she was, selling, she was knitting and selling jerseys, but that wasn't um, uh, going well. So I decided one Saturday to go to Ikopo, to town, and I approached a certain Indian businessman who owned a certain wholesale shop. I told him uh, my story, said I wanted to do, go to university and study, but this is the problem. Is there any way he could give me a loan which I would use to support my mother and my siblings? so that after, after I finished my degree, I could then pay him back. Very interestingly, that man uh, didn't even ask me many questions. He said, okay, I can help you, but I can't give you money. I'll give you a voucher, which you must give to your mom. Every, once a month, she must come to my shop, and uh, she will be given groceries up to the value, I think, I think it was 20 rand, if I'm not mistaken. 20 rand or 40 rand, but that was a lot a long of time money ago. back then. Uh, yeah, it was quite some money then. And uh, she said, he said, until you finish your degree, this is what we'll do, and then you can repay it after your degree. So uh, I was very happy. He didn't ask me to sign anything, he just took my word. And uh, my mom could not believe it when I came back from town and told her that. I had been able to make arrangements so that they would be able to have groceries while I was studying. And uh, that is what happened for three years. And when I'd finished my junior degree, I went back to uh, this man, his name was Mr. Musa, and uh, thanked him and asked him what arrangements we could make for me to pay back. So <clears throat> he said, no, don't worry. Just do to others what I've done to you. And, uh, and uh, I thought that was very important. And uh, in my own small way, I tried to do that. Until now. Yes, Chief Justice. Now, <clears throat> and I said to the anger of my audience at one time, and I was rather uncharitable, that the problem with Africa is that those who have ideas have no power and those with power have no ideas. 
and, 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 and that in many ways still informs. So we have all the, you have all these ideas on how we can green Africa. I listen to you and I can see you are bubbling with ideas, but you don't have the power. And the fellow with power has completely no idea. And yet somehow, and this I think is your problem, when a choice, when you're the, the electorate is given the choice between you with ideas and the one without ideas, the Africans' affinity for people without ideas is amazing. <laughs> is amazing. To me, the, 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 man, the, the way the panelists approach this thing is correct, to say we have to answer this question first. What is the Africa we want? So we say we want an Africa that is free of violent conflict and war. What leadership do you produce to get that result? We want an Africa that is free from poverty. What kind of leadership do you need to create to, to end that poverty? We want an Africa that is free of, that, that, that is driven by women's emancipation. Where is this leadership? How do you create it? We want an Africa that is free of corruption. How do you produce this leadership that is not corrupt? Now, these are the questions that you've got to answer, these practical things that President Kagame was talking about. And it's not an easy question to answer. But I think critically, and we were discussing this thing yesterday, critically, we need a critical self-assessment of ourselves as Africans. To say, as, as, President, as President Kagame was saying, we've been discussing this thing about the quality of leadership, challenges we face for a very long time. But when have we sat down to say, now let us assess, no, you, 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 Tabo Mbegi, were president of South Africa for so long. Let's assess your performance. Did you provide this kind of leadership that is suitable for this Africa that we want? Where did you go wrong? We've got the African peer review mechanism, which President Obasanjo can speak about. That's part of what it was supposed to do, so that we sit as peers to say, no, but the President, you are misbehaving. You are stealing public resources. You've accessed power in order to put money in your pocket. This is not the leadership we want. But we're not doing that sufficiently because we're afraid. We're afraid to speak frankly to one another about the wrong things that we're doing. And I think if we don't do that, we will meet a century hence to discuss the same question. I think that critical self-assessment of the continent is necessary. And I mean a real, critical, truthful self-assessment that's critical. And I think that's a very, that would be an important step forward in terms of uh, producing this kind of leadership which Africa wants. I'm handing this to President Kapp. I, I suspected you might do that, yes. <laughs> what a cruel gesture, Tabo. <coughs> We want an Africa, as you said, where there is equality of gender, equality of opportunity, um, promise of a good, healthy life, promise of an educated society, promise of a leadership that thinks more about service than being served. We want all of that, borders to, 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 to be removed and so on. Why don't we have it? My answer is very clear, because you have a selfish leadership extremely selfish. We often, think, we often think of the problem of leadership as being the problem of the leaders alone. Fine. They must be defined, have integrity, have all those we want. But to succeed, they must be able to implant those attributes in the population. Their political parties must be organized in such a way that they reflect those values and embody those aspirations in their political interaction. If they don't, you have trouble. We are multi-ethnic societies. What basic values have we embodied in these societies? Equality? Or is it diversity? How do you convert diversity into strength 
rather than diversity as a cause for war and internecine fighting. Can it be done? It can be done. It's been done in centuries before, in Europe and elsewhere. Why can't it be done in Africa? But we don't have the will because we are selfish. We are concerned of the here and now in the seat I am in. That's wrong. We have, you know, it's ironical that you have a, a continent with the best natural resources of any others as of today. But they are being exploited for the sustenance of those who enslaved us and continue exploiting us rather than being exploited for our own ends, emancipation. <laughs> Why? Because you have a leadership that does not recognize the degree of present day, present day enslavement, economic enslavement, and the necessity for, uh, for, for, for emancipation. It's ironical. We, we talk about development, but we don't stop in time to define what development in our kind of situation is. One of the greatest reasons of admiration for this country, for instance, is the fact that you have here a universal system of health and education delivery. Now, that is development. Rwanda is more developed than any of these Western countries in this regard, where you have assured health and education delivery. So, we really must rethink where we are, why we are what we are, what we can be, and how we can. I agree, women, youth, and all those things. But internally, the fault is in us, dear Brutus, not in our stars. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um... You are there at the bombers of Kenya. Raila Molo Odinga, you are there at the bombers of Kenya. Moses Masika Wetangula, you are there at the bombers of Kenya. Stephen Kalonzo Musioka, you are there at the bombers of Kenya. Musalia Mudafet, you are there at the bombers of Kenya. Yukuru Aukot, you served as the executive of the Committee of Experts. We said that we would be governed by this constitution. We have created institutions, let those institutions work. Let us remember, you Kenyans, that there is only one country for us, and that country is Kenya. Walimu Julius Kambaraki Nyerere said that you should look out for politicians who are governed by five things. Those who seek power for its own sake, those who seek property for its own sake, those who seek popularity for its own sake, those who seek prestige for its own sake, and those who seek pomposity for its own sake. We must preserve this country and you politicians remember that the right to lead is a right, is a privilege and that you do not have the monopoly of wisdom, nor do you have the monopoly of this country. Kenya is our motherland to be protected and don't appeal to our ethnic sensibilities. We are Kenyans, we are proud of our diversity, we are proud Kikuyus, proud Kambas, but it is the combination that makes Kenya great. So go out there and ask for our votes in humility. Don't go into the kitchen of the IEBC and tell them what to cook. Don't tell them how to procure. Don't threaten institutions, protect the judiciary, protect IEBC. And you, Wanyonyi Chabukati, you are my classmate. Have a backbone. If you give politicians an inch, they'll take a mile. And I have no doubt in my mind that we will have a peaceful election, that peace and justice will be done. We need peace, and we need peace on the backbone of justice. I have no doubt. I've listened to His Grace the Bishop, and I have no doubt. I've listened to my friend Frank Jenga, I have no doubt. This country is on the right path. Lakini nyinyi wananchi mkumbuke ya kwamba ikiwa tutaongozwa na ujinga wa wanasiasa, ujinga huo utatutafuna. Kenya ni nchi yetu tuipende kama vile tunavyosema katika wimbo wetu wa taifa. Mungu ajalie. But I tell you that as a father, you are accountable to God for the position of influence he has given you. You can't fall asleep at the wheel, only to wake up one day and realize that your job or your hobbies have no eternal value, but the souls of your children do. Some men will hear this and agree with it. 
but have no resolve to live it out. Instead, they will live for themselves and waste the opportunity to leave a godly legacy for the next generation. But there are some men who, regardless of the mistakes we've made in the past, regardless of what our fathers did not do for us, will give the strength of our arms and the rest of our days to loving God with all that we are and to teach our children to do the same. And whenever possible, to love and mentor others who have no father in their lives, but who desperately need help and direction. And we are inviting any man whose heart is willing and courageous to join us in this resolution. In my home, the decision has already been made you don't have to ask who will guide my family, because by God's grace, I will. You don't have to ask who will teach my son to follow Christ, because I will. Who will accept the responsibility of providing and protecting my family? I will. Who will ask God to break the chain of destructive patterns in my family's history? I will. Who will pray for and bless my children to boldly pursue whatever God calls them to do. I am their father. I will. I accept this responsibility and it is my privilege to embrace it. I want the favor of God and his blessing on my home. Any good man does. So where are you men of courage? Where are you fathers who fear the Lord? It's time to rise up and answer the call that God has given to you and to say, I will, I will, I will.